Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to look at the key terms for AP Psychology 2.8, which is intelligence and achievement. If you want to see the full essential knowledge video where I talk about the, the CD questions and what you need to know for each one in more detail, I also have this on my channel, so feel free to go and look at that. If this is this, you're just looking for basically the key terms, definitions, and examples, this is the video for you. Have your note cards ready. Um, you can put them in your notebook, whatever works for you. Of course, you you always have to find your best way to study, right? I have kids who like flashcards. I have kids who work better on the computer with their quizlets and everything. I have kids who put it in their notebooks. So you have to find what is the best way for you to remember all of these key terms. And there are a lot of them in AP psychology. So you have to find what's going to work for you. And especially now, if you are at the beginning of the year, now, if you're at the end of the year, maybe it's a bit late, but if you're at the beginning of the year, it's a time to really start organizing your notes, organizing your flashcards that is never too late to do it, but it's always better to start early. So hopefully you are at a good point in the year right now where you can actually get these um, cards made and your notes, make them colorful, make them easy to read, make them understandable so that you can study from them uh, really quickly and efficiently. Okay. And if you like the content, please do subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment. I do answer everyone. Okay. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go through the four CED questions, the, the key terms that apply to all four CED questions from 2.8. The first one was explain how modern and historical theories describe intelligence. The second one was explain how intelligence is measured. The third one is explain how systematic systemic issues relate to the quantitative and qualitative uses of intelligence assessments. And the last one was explain how academic achievements is measured in and experienced as compared to intelligence. So these are the uh, key terms that we're going to go through. And there's probably more, but these are the ones that came out from the College Board CED that seemed to really stand out and were really important for this unit. So these are the ones we're going to do. Okay, we're going to start with the concept of G. So the definition for the concept of G is the G factor or general intelligence refers to a single underlying cognitive ability that influences performance across a wide range of mental tasks. It suggests that individuals who perform well on one type of cognitive task tend to perform well on others due to this general intelligence factor. Here's an example for you. A person who scores high on a math test, a numerical reasoning, is also likely to score well on a reading comprehension comprehension test, verbal reasoning, because of their general intelligence or G, which supports strong cognitive performance across different types of tasks. The next one is standardization. Standardization is the process of ensuring that a test or assessment is administered and scored in consistent and uniform matter for all individuals. This helps to ensure fairness and allows for comparison of results across different test takers. So for example, the SAT is a standardized test because every student who takes it answers the same questions under the same conditions, such as the time limits, and the scores are interpreted using the same scale. This allows for direct comparison of scores between students from different schools or regions. Hence, it is standardized. It standardizes the test across the world. Validity. Validity refers to how well a test or assessment measures what it's supposed to measure. A test is valid if it accurately reflects the skill or concept it claims to assess. So if a math test is designed to measure a student's ability to solve algebra problems, it is valid if the questions on the test are actually about algebra and not about unrelated topics like history or vocabulary. Sounds kind of like com not common sense, but it is. Construct validity. Construct validity refers to how well a test or tool measures the concept or trait it is intended to measure. It ensures that the test accurately reflects the theoretical concept it aims to assess. What does that mean? If a test is designed to measure intelligence, it should cover various aspects of intelligence, such as logical reasoning, problem solving, and memory, rather than unrelated skills like physical fitness. If the test successfully measures these components, it has good construct validity. Predictive validity. Predictive validity refers to how well a test or measurement predicts future performance or behavior based on the results. So if a college entrance exam like the SAT has high predictive, sorry, high, has high predictive validity, it means that students who score well on the exam are likely to perform well in college as the test accurately predicts future academic success. Test retest reliability. 
Test for test reliability refers to the consistency of a test's results when the same individual takes the test multiple times under similar conditions. A test has high test retest reliability if it produces similar results across different administrations. So if a person takes an IQ test today and then takes the same test again in a few weeks, their score should be very similar if the test has high test retest reliability. Split half reliability. Split half reliability refers to the consistency of a test's results when it divides the test into two halves. If both halves of the test yield similar results, the test has high split half reliability. If a 20 question math test is split into two sets of 10 questions each and a student scores similarly on both halves, the test has good split half reliability. This indicates that the test is consistent across its different parts. The Flynn effect. The Flynn effect refers to the observed trend the observed trend of rising IQ scores across populations over time, typically from one generation to another. So if people scored an average IQ of 100 in the 1950s, by today's standards, their scores might seem low, while modern test takers are scoring higher. This rise in scores is thought to result from improved education, nutrition, and access to information. We, in the 1950s, 60s, we did not have the internet. We did not have access to everything that we have now. And so that access to that sheer amount of edu of education and access to all that information has definitely helped our IQ scores go up. That is the Flynn effect. Oops. Achievement tests. Achievement tests are assessments designed to measure a person's knowledge or skills in a specific subject, sorry, specific subject area or academic content that they've learned. A math final exam given at the end of a school year term to assess students' understanding of the topics covered during the course is an example of an achievement test. It measures how well students have mastered the material taught in the class. I think, you know, you think of it, your AP exam, although it is a standardized test because everybody's taking the same test, it is still measuring the, uh, the knowledge what you've what you've learned throughout the year in AP psychology. The aptitude tests. Aptitude tests are assessments designed to predict a person's ability to learn new skills or perform, perform in a particular area in the future. An SAT is an example of an aptitude test and is designed to predict how well a student is likely to perform in college based on their reasoning and problem solving abilities. You also see aptitude tests for different careers. So you would take the test to see which career you would fit best based on what your problem solving skill is, your logic, all of that. So that's also an aptitude test. Fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is the belief that abilities, intelligence, and talents are static and cannot be changed or improved with time or effort. A student with a fixed mindset might think, I'm just not good at math and no amount of studying is going to help me. I think I've heard that before, but this belief prevents them from putting in the effort to improve their math skills. Having that fixed mindset stops you from going forward. So you got to think positive, right? Growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through hard work, effort, and learning. So a student with a growth mindset might think, I can get better at math if I keep practicing and studying. This mindset encourages them to put in effort and embrace challenges to improve their skills. And remember what I said in the other video, what you put into something is what you get out of it. So if you are spending the time to write your flashcards, learn your material, watch the videos, really kind of put that positive effort into it, your results will reflect that and keeping that positive attitude when you're doing it. Okay, so now we're just going to go through just each word from the key terms. You can pause the video and give me, like, just say it out loud or just read it from your notes just so you can say it again, the definition and the example of each of these concepts. Let's start with concept of G, an example and the definition, or the other way around, doesn't matter. Standardization, definition and example. Validity, definition and example. Construct validity, definition, example. Predictive validity, definition, example. Test retest reliability, definition, example. Split half reliability, definition, example. The Flynn effect, what is the definition? And what is an example? Achievement tests, definition and example. Aptitude tests, definition and example. 
fixed mindset. Definition and example. And the last one, growth mindset. Definition and example. That's all the key terms for 2.8. I hope that you will keep that growth mindset and really put in the effort and really put in the, the time to learn the words, to learn the, the content so that you can do really well on that AP exam in May or on your unit exams as you're going along. If you like the video, please give me a like. And if you have a chance, subscribe to my channel. I really love seeing the numbers go up. I know I kind of get really kind of giddy about it and my kids laugh at me, but hey, you know what? It, it, it's all in what it is. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Good luck on your tests and good luck uh, in your future. I will see you next time when we start unit three.